As best I knew, our mysterious murder had happened here, in the hall. At the very least, I thought the body warranted a closer look. Luckily for me, I was no stranger to corpses. Funerals for nine different husbands will do that, you know. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. It seems I'm not alone here. But what is the poor girl doing? She's just pacing back and forth and muttering to herself. Have the evening's events already broken her fragile little mind? My dear little mysteries, what in the world are you doing? I'm counting. So good to see they still teach that in grade school these days. How marvelous. seems off. I need to check again. On second thought, maybe they don't teach it so well after all. I almost think I'll regret asking. But darling, what timing is off? It's Mr. Klops, the butler. Valet. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Well, what about him then? I saw him go into this room when the lights were out. I see. Is that when he found the body, do you think? Mm, I think so. He came running out looking for Mr. Horatio. I don't think he saw me. Oh, well, you can't blame the poor man for that. He only sees half as much as the rest of us. But just what does that have to do with all your pacing and counting? I think... He was in here too long. I beg your pardon. Too long? I've been timing how long it takes to walk from the door to the... to the body. It doesn't add up. I'm sure he was in here longer. Maybe an extra 20 seconds. Well, aren't you a delightfully clever little girl? Maybe you should have been a detective rather than a fabulously wealthy industrial heiress. Oh, it's nothing, really. It's just... Well, it's not my first time being around a murder case. That's all. I guess that helps a little. I'm sorry, my dear, but did you say this isn't your first murder? It wasn't my murder, but I was there when it happened. My, my. I never would have imagined. It must make for an absolutely thrilling story, I'm sure. Please, you must forgive me, but... But I really don't want to talk about it. Of course. How rude of me to pry. I'm sure the experience must have been just ghastly for you, but... You don't suppose it could have something to do with our current predicament, do you? No. No, I don't think so. It was a long way away. And the killer... was stopped. And besides, except for Leah and I, nobody here was involved. Well, that's a relief. It would be just awful if there was a serial killer following you around, or something like that. It must just be coincidence, then, that people keep dropping dead wherever you go. I... suppose that it must be. In any case, it's a good thing I found you, my dear. I had a feeling you just might be in need of my expertise. Your expertise? Oh, yes, dear. I've buried nine husbands after all. I've got this morning business down pat, if I do say so myself. Forgive me, I didn't know. I'm so sorry to hear it. That's just so much bad luck for one lifetime. One gets used to it. And it's not all bad news. My last husband, the Duke, left me this marvelous country estate that is absolutely to die for. But, silly me, here I am going on and on about myself. 
You must be so terribly distraught about all of this. The prince and I, well, we hadn't been seeing each other for very long. But still, it's such a horrible crime. That's why I can't rest until I know the truth behind it. He did seem rather smitten with you, I must say. Well, he... He just liked to exaggerate, I'm sure. He had rather his own unique way with words. Unique is one way to put it. You don't suppose that in his grandiose infatuation, he wrote you into his will, did he? Oh, I can't imagine that he would have. He never said so anyway. Hmm, pity. That's usually the first thing I ask for. Ah, oh, well. Live and learn, my dear. Was it only coincidence that the trail of candles in the center of the main hall seemed to lead straight to the body of the prince? Or had our mysterious killer intentionally used them to frame their handiwork out of some sense of macabre artistry? Well, tragic as it might be to despoil a work of art, it occurred to me that a candle might come in handy for searching the dark old house. Since with all the commotion of finding the body, I must have misplaced the one I had earlier. I decided it was time to take a closer look at the body. Corpses are always a bit distasteful, to be sure, but I'd seen enough rich old lords killed in unfortunate hunting accidents that I was rather used to it. The prince's most obvious injury was the wound on his back. Judging from the way the clothes had been pierced, it had almost certainly been made by a knife. The wound itself was deep and vicious, clearly the work of no ordinary butter knife. The blood had soaked through the back of the prince's evening wear, but given the nastiness of the wound itself, there wasn't as much of it as I might have expected. The prince was face down on the floor, and there was an odd angle to his right leg. So odd, in fact, that I'd wager a platinum necklace or two that it was broken in at least one spot. Could simply collapsing on the spot from a stab wound cause a break like that? I seriously doubt it. There was something odd about the prince's right hand. I knelt down to get as close a look as I could without touching it. The palm and inside of the fingers had been burnt and blackened. I checked the left hand as well, just to be sure, but it seemed undamaged. must have been abandoned for quite some time indeed. For on one side of the hall, part of the wall itself had collapsed, and nature was slowly but surely spilling into the house and reclaiming its territory. Let's hope that the place would hold up long enough for us to wrap up our little party at the very least. The phone itself was heavy, made of metal, and certainly quite old-fashioned. Normally, that's the sort of style I prefer, but right now, a call history of some kind would have come in rather handy. But why is the receiver dangling like that? Did this table get bumped at some point?
The phone itself was heavy, made of metal, and certainly quite old-fashioned. Normally, that's the sort of style, but why is the receiver dangling like that? At first, I was inclined to laugh at the giant, oddly proportioned statue that was the dining room's centerpiece. But as I drew closer, I couldn't help but feel a bit intimidated by the way it loomed over me. <laughs> then again, I could say the exact same things about that gruesome one-eyed manservant, Klops. Who'd have ever thought he would have so much in common with a work of art? The family crest of the Lee still adorned some of the flags and banners that hung from the walls in the dining room. I suppose it wasn't a bad crest, really. A little overly dramatic with all the spikiness, perhaps. But then, they weren't exactly a family that had cultivated a particularly cuddly image. The family crest of the Lees still adorned some of the flags and banners that hung from the walls. A little overly dramatic with all the spikiness, perhaps. Long, narrow tables stretched down either side of the room for what seemed like forever. At one end were the remnants of our refreshments from earlier. But I think I'll leave them alone for now. I mean, it didn't look like poison had anything to do with the prince's death, but one can never be too careful. I returned to what the prince had called the proverbial smoke-filled room. It struck me that this would be the perfect place to call everyone and reveal the truth to this mystery. All in good time, of course. In the meantime, I thought it wise to take another look around while I still had the room to myself. That cabinet had a few things of interest in it, if I remember correctly. Let's take a closer look. In the cabinet, there was an odd little doll that seemed to be made out of straw. Was it some kind of voodoo doll? I tried making those a time or two myself, although, to my great dismay, they never seemed to actually work quite right. A padded velvet cushion sat in the cabinet looking somewhat forlorn. Surely it was meant to showcase something more interesting, but there was nothing on it now. I could swear that something had been on this cushion before. Just what was it? Yes, that was it. There had been a knife on the cushion during our tour. I was sure of it. And not just any knife. The knife that may have stabbed the prince. But who could have taken it? I cast my mind back, trying to remember if anyone had lingered behind for even a moment. But it availed me nothing. The prince had been the first to leave the room, but that was the only thing of which I was certain.
On one side of the room, there was a wine rack filled with dusty old bottles. Most were empty, but a few still contained small amounts of what must have been very well-aged red wine. At least, I hoped it was just wine. With a family like the Lees, one could never be quite sure. Perhaps I should take a bottle with me to check it later. Just in case. The large crystal globe in the cabinet was impossible to miss. It seemed to be filled with a swirling red mist of some kind, and as I stared into it, I thought for a moment that I could see a pair of malevolent eyes. Or was it just one, staring back? But surely it must have just been my reflection in combination with the dim light. The strange pose of the statue in the corner of the room rather reminded me of my third husband. You see, the last time I saw the dear old boy, he was in the process of losing his balance and tumbling down the whole stairs. Terrible tragedy, really. I had to have those stairs completely replaced just to get the blood out. <laughs> 